share with us a presentation. And after finishing, you can ask them the questions you have. And I hope you all participate in, in this meeting. So I give you the, the, the word, uh, Professor Granham, so please. Okay, uh, Bob, thank you very much. Thank you, Yodi. Uh, I think I need to have uh, the share screen. Yes, I will make you the host. Uh, so that I could share my screen. That would be great. Okay, now you're the host. Okay, let me see what I can do with that. Uh, now I, okay, let me, I think so. Okay, I think I got this shit. Um, I think there are two people, so I'm just gonna uh, admit them. Okay. Can Can you see my screen or not? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. That's all right. Okay. Uh, well. Um, well. Well. Thank you very much, Yudi. And uh, uh, it's it's always pleasure to be at University del Amazonia. Uh, I could see a couple of known faces like Kamanza, Professor Kamanza is there, and of course, Yudi, I know you. Uh, Sylvia is there, I think Leah is there, so all these people I know. Am I clear? Can can everybody understand me, or should I use the microphone? It is perfect. Yeah, professor. Perfect. Okay, okay. Um, hey, uh, professor Rena, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Could you please um, record the, this meeting? Uh, okay, let me see from where to record. That's the well. If you want, you can take back the the control for being host. Okay. Okay. Uh, could you give me the the host, please? Could you? Oh gosh! Oh gosh! You're, you're putting me into lots of trouble. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see what I can do. Uh, show a grid video. Uh, stop video. Okay, I've approved it. Okay, and I'm still, you know, I mean, yeah, adding people. So probably you can you can add add people now. Okay. 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 So, uh, yeah, uh, I think you need to mute everyone because otherwise it will keep on. Keep on banging, okay? Um, okay. Um, well, uh, um, when 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 you talk to me about it, that how can I make my online class interesting? Because this is a topic which is which is very in these days, and uh, due to this pandemic mm -hmm. and this COVID nineteen, we have to we all have to go uh, towards online teaching. Uh, so for for many of us, it was really a new experience, uh, at least for me as well, because. Uh, I have been involved in online assessments, but uh, I've never been involved before March in um, in in this online online teaching. Uh, so, uh, and then working in the UK, it was it was really hard because uh, you need to monitor the student needs and you need to monitor the student assessments and needs analysis because here that's how we admit our students. Uh, but anyhow, I mean, we, we really worked hard to make our classes online interesting. And that's that's what I, I came up for you. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is today's menu. Uh, we will go very simple. We will go step by step. Um, and I would try to talk with you guys for 45 to 50 minutes. But I would really appreciate to take your questions at the end because the questions are more important at the end if you take those questions uh, and if you ask those questions because then I would be able to answer based upon my experience of teaching uh, in the UK and all over. So, uh, and and while I was making this presentation, I, I tried my best to keep it uh, very simple and to keep it based upon my experiences of teaching of last 15, 20 years. Uh, so this is what we will be talking today. We will talk about pedagogy, online pedagogy, 
and then we will talk about challenges in online pedagogy and how to deal with these challenges and with, with reference to especially with reference to at the end of uh, there's a lots of challenges in assessment so we will be talking about all those things i would not go into the details but i would like to talk about many online free resources which you can use sitting at home and which you can use to generate interest in your online classes and mm -hmm. similarly i would like to talk about uh, so much uh, free in assessment tools which you can talk about and through which you can do your assessment of your students sitting at home uh, while don't get them make bored okay uh, so pedagogy uh, so i mean if if we go very simple very simple definition of pedagogy is about it's impart knowledge and skills uh, allows interaction between teacher and students and include teaching theory and practice feedback and assessment so when we talk about any pedagogy we just talk about three things number one knowledge should impart number two there should be an interaction between teachers and student and there sh there should be a theory and a practice and in result of that theory and practice there should be a feedback and assessment this is what we this is what we do this is what we do in our in our in our pedagogical skills this is what we do when we teach our students and this is this should be monitored in our online teaching okay. so how you can the first rule the rule of thumb is how you can monitor that you that you are having a good pedagogical skill is how about number 1 do you really think so when you go for an online class do you really think you are transmitting any knowledge or any skill number 2 do, do you think there is an interaction going on between teachers and student so for example in an online class if it's only an interaction from the teaching side and the students are not talking it mean it mean there is some problem with within the pedagogical skills and of course the most important thing is you are you are using some activities you are using some learning resources you are using some teaching styles and teaching philosophies to impart that knowledge knowledge and at the end the most important thing is are you providing a feedback to the students so this is all about pedagogy and in all these three elements we 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 really take care of in online teaching as well so what is online pedagogy uh this is a very old definition uh, and i deliberately took this definition which is very old because this is the definition which talks about 30 years before when there was a new trend of online teaching so it used to talk about the term online pedagogy is includes number of computer assisted learning and teaching so that time it was only computer assisted but now the word has changed there is a lots of revolution in in all that in this field and that revolution is and that revolution is now we are using mobile phones computers laptops gadgets chrome books google books multimedias applications so you would see that from a computer only now it has gone to a point where there's a lots of electronic gadgets are using would you believe teaching is happening on whatsapp teaching is happening on emails teaching is happening on facebook live so so you 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 can see that from from computer only to it has gone to a point where there are lots of gadgets involved in that teaching okay so i mean this is a little, little bit this is a bit modern definition of this is a bit modern definition of online teaching which is faculty driven instructions include real time which is synchronous and which happens anywhere uh, which is a time bound and the other one is asynchronous which is uh, which is which doesn't need a time so this is what's happening uh yudi i think you don't have the control because uh, i mean it's uh, i think do i need to admit people or is it yudi can you hear me Yes, teacher. Um, yes, I can. 
I think the problem is happening is. Uh, so do you have the control? I think you you have the control now. Okay, let me see. Because no, I have a group so control so you actually back. The control. You you got the control back. And it's, um, it, yeah, it says you these controlling your screen. So I mean, you you have the control. Okay, should I? No, no, it's all right. You uh, you uh, you take the control. Okay, so um, coming back to this online pedag pedagogy again. So we, I was talking about that from thirty years before. It was just online, a computer assisted language learning or computer assisted teaching. But in thirty years, it has gone too far. Which is not only computer. We talk about lots of gadgets. We talk about Facebook Live. We talk about WhatsApp teaching. We talk about Zoom, and you know, and so many things. So this is a bit modern definition, which is online pedagogy is faculty delivered instruction via the internet. Only that can include real time, synchronous, and anytime, anywhere asynchronous interaction. So the important thing is that it should be delivered by a teacher. Yes, there's a. That's a different debate whether teacher could be a robot or not, or whether robots are replacing teachers or not. Now the world is going towards that debate. But when we talk about online pedagogy, it's always important that it should be delivered by a faculty. It should be delivered by a teacher. Uh, so th these two parallel processes take place. Number one, why online teaching? What happens? Students become more active, reflective learners. and how it become more active because it's only not only they are learning they are also learning the use of gadgets it's not only they are learning the content they are also learning the technology and they have more reflective practices because you 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 make a video you record a video and you send it to your student students can watch that video again and again which would give him more chance to reflect so this is a very important point when we talk about online learning that students are more active and then student and teacher engage in learning through us technology and become more familiar with technology so it's not only about the content when we go for this modern online teaching it's not only you are teaching the content or it's not only you are learning the content or language or anything you are also learning the use of technology so it has become only from content teaching to content technological teaching so that's a big advance advancement in the field of pedagogical skills and in the field of language teaching or whatever subject you take it Okay, so with this we talk about approaches to online teaching. Uh, as we talk about, there are two two approaches. Number one is uh, which is synchronous learning, and synchronous learning mean which is happening at the same time. For example, live chats. We are in a Zoom chat and we are talking about all the chats and all those things. Audio video conferencing. We are doing the Zoom talk. So this is a synchronous learning. We share our data with each other. uh we raise our hand virtually and then we 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 are sitting at different part of the world but we are connected we are connected with one slide show so so this is a synchronous learning now being a teacher you have to decide by yourself that whether you want to do a synchronous learning or you want to do a asynchronous learning and asynchronous learning mean you write something send an email and wait for your student to read that email in which you have sent some content third discussion uh, you have started a blog some people have joined it some people might join later tonight some people might join later in the morning but then they are learning for it and the news groups file attachment so so all these things but but being a teacher it's important that you decide by yourself based upon your your university requirements or your student requirement that whether you want to give a synchronous learning or you want to give a asynchronous learning
do you want to go for a facebook live or do you want to go for a zoom or do you want to go for a skype and you want everyone to learn about it at the same time that's synchronous or you want to record your videos and send it to all your students and then wait for them to see your videos to give you feedback and then learn from that in the uk here we we do both things we do synchronous learning for example in our classes at the moment we are dealing with eight students we used to have 24 students in one class but now we got only eight but in our classrooms they have trigonal cameras which are monitoring us for the students who are sitting at their homes in different part of the world so we are doing asynchronous learning for them but at the same time those cameras are recorded recording our videos as well they record the whole class of 3 hours class and then after the class they send all the video to all the students who are sitting in the classroom or who are sitting at home so at the same time we are doing both kind of learning and teaching we are doing synchronous learning and we are doing asynchronous learning as well so it's it's your choice and it's the choice of the university or of your administration or your student requirement that what kind of learning and teaching you want to do but my personal understanding is that university should have some relaxed rules about it because this is a diff- different and difficult time for example if you can't do a class at one time yes you should be given a chance to record your videos so that you can share those videos with your students and and they can they can they can see those videos uh so yeah we we just briefly talked about uh that uh but in 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 asynchronous teaching uh the the teacher should be designing all these activities and he should facilitate all his learners to go for all those learning activities so 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 yeah so this is this is important in that way okay so from this now we are moving towards the challenges uh some of the challenges for the instructors of teaching online uh after after thinking a lot and based upon my experience and sh- and talking with the other people uh in my colleagues and my other fellows who are teaching in the world uh i just come up four or five and then i try to adapt adapt it with 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 the, with the online resources available so we have mostly four kind of challenges which is familiarity with the online environment capacity to use the medium to its advantage being available to students on extended based electronic system and providing quick responses assessment and feedback to student so i if 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 we generally sum up there are so many challenges there are so many such challenges but i try to sum up all those challenges under these four four main points which is sometimes we don't we are not familiar with the you know, online environment uh we we don't know how to use that medium uh we cannot make ourselves available on the time all the time for students and teacher for online learning because we have families we have friends back home and the most important thing is yes you are teaching an online class but then how you are providing a feedback and assessment for them and this is what i got from this is education guidelines for good practices 2009 okay so apart from all challenges um i have a very short video for you uh and this is it talks about what kind of challenges a teacher could have so you could should see that being a teacher these days sometimes we have to sit in our toilets and set our books like this because we are doing an online teaching uh let me see if i could uh run a video for you guys about it It's not displaying the video. I don't know if it's only for me. There is sound, but there are no video. There are yeah, no- it's just an image. Okay, how's that? No, I'm pretty sure he said that it's a video. No. 
watching the video. Oh, no, no, no. oh, you don't watch the video? No, 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 no. It is just, a, it is just a sound, but not the video. It's a sound. No worries, no worries, no worries. I'm just gonna send it to you in the chat. Mm -hmm. Now it is for. <laughs> Did you get the, did, you, did everyone get that? Not yet. No? no. Okay, no worries. Did you see now? So sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The slides. Yeah. Okay, Can you see the video now? No. No, sir. No, you, you need to better, stop sharing the screen. You have better again. optimize the quality of the video. Optimize the quality. You cannot turn on Zoom. Okay, okay, now we now we are watching the video.
Yeah, so... <laughs> Are you back to my screen or not? Presentation screen? No, sir. Um, I think you're just sharing one screen. So you should stop sharing and share again because we're not seeing your, your slides. No worries. No worries. Share screen. Uh, here we go. Yeah, here it is. Yes. Okay, so yeah, so these were just, I mean, they were just a glimpse of few challenges which we are facing being an online teacher that sometimes students calling on a wrong time, but you have to be on the on. Yeah, so, so this is how it is. Okay, so uh, we're talking about back to these things, the familiarity with the online environment. Uh, there are there are many online free resources to teach English, uh, and this is what we we found out uh, lately working in this field of language teaching. Uh, what happened basically? Uh, Sometimes we are just scared of using all these resources because no idea what will happen. How are we gonna work on these resources and all those things? But I'm telling you, when these resources are very very friendly, very very friendly. So I'm just giving you all these resources so that you can you can play with all these resources by yourself and try to find out the material for you. For example, Kahoot. Kahoot is a very well known application which is used for the classes teaching and it is also used for online teaching. Uh, does anyone use does anyone use Kahoot for his classes? Something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then we got Nearpod. Nearpod is a very wonderful app as well. I mean, which you can use for the for the classes as well. Bookwidgets.com, quizzes.com, edupuzzle.com, 3P Learning, uh, Fun English Games, uh, Games to Learn English, uh, ESL Games Plus, uh, Fluentu.com, and Fun English Games, HelpfulGames.com, ESL Your Dictionary. So all these resources they are they are very very wonderful resources uh what you have to do is you just need to go onto their websites and they're mostly free there because if you are if you are working for an educational organization they basically do all these resources free of free of charge so you don't have to pay anything uh then just just play with them they are self-explanatory resources and then once you start using them you will be more familiar with them and I'm telling you, your students will be more good in them because they are the generation of technology. So they know very well how to play with, with technology. So you just need to familiarize yourself with this environment. And plus, now there are lots of lots of applications. There are lots of applications going on with, with, with this language learning. For example, there is there is one which I show you. This is Bible. Yeah, so, so Babel is one of them which you can use for your students and I, I have been using it to, to, to use for different languages as well. But then you need to be very, 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 very careful that what kind of language apps your students are, are using. Uh, capacity to use the medium to its advantage. We have lots of mediums going on, which is Skype, Zoom, Google Handouts, Google Classroom, Blackboard, and WizIQ. Um, initially, Zoom was only offering a 40-minute session, which was free. But now again, if you are working for an educational organization, you are coming for a college, school, or university, they give you an unlimited, unlimited free access. Uh, Skype, Google Handouts, Google Classroom. So you can use any of them. You can use any of them. They have their own plus and minuses. Uh, uh, and then, I mean, we're not going into the video of, of these detail, but doesn't matter. Okay. The question is, is, is what, 
which one to choose that's that's a question which usually when student when student or, or teachers they go for online teaching they usually ask um if you are teaching one to one uh just think about which one is the is the is the free option uh most people turn to skype first but i think zoom uh and google handouts they are the best best for online teaching as well uh but i mean skype has has more access it has been access to more more people around the world uh wiz iq is is a great software but then it's a bit expensive and uh, my best advice is to try out different different options choose one which you think that is more easy uh you can always change the platform uh i personally use zoom uh in my university we use zoom zoom because zoom is more friendly you can make different you can you can do language activities by making them into different groups as well uh so we i mean i'm not promoting zoom but my my own experience is that zoom is more useful than than any other uh online thing okay uh the other challenge is which is being available to students on extended base electronically very important now it's again up to you your contract your contract with your university for how many hours you should be doing online teaching for example for example if you used to teach a class which is a 3 hours class for face to face teaching in the uk we have cut that class into 1 hour 3 hour face to face up class has been divided into 1 hour online class why because in face to face teaching there is lots of interaction going on because you are not the only one who are talking students are involved as well plus there are activities going on as well so you need to see that how your 3 hours class can fit into 1 hour class uh so that's that's what we do in the uk that a 3 hour class has been changed into if you are teaching face to face it's a 3 hour class but if you are teaching online it's a 1 hour class for the same accreditation for example first sub group do you want to do you want to set up first sub group uh it's your choice i mean in the uk we don't encourage we don't encourage to set up whatsapp group because then it disturb lots of privacy it's always i mean messages 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 and then then people start sharing sometime unauthentic and unnecessary material in those whatsapp groups as well so it's your choice how you want to set it up email groups this is very good uh we uh when we go for asynchronous teaching we have an email groups which we make a video and send it to everyone and then people reply to those videos and going email to everyone so it's a kind of a feedback system starts in that email as well so that you can start that chat groups yeah face group groups uh, if you want to set up you can start a face facebook chat group as well blogs blogs are really important uh and they are also a very good tool for assessment as well uh you can put a question for your student and you can start a blog about it and then sitting at in the evening you can monitor that blog what people are writing uh you can even for example i mean what we do here is uh we start a blog but then we ask student to give feedback on that or to give their input in that so students write their for example for i just give an example for example i i start a blog a uh, blog uh what is the most important skill required for language learning this is a question i put in a blog but then i ask my students to give a feedback and give an input so they give everyone gives an input because for every input you give different marks and then in sitting at home you can monitor that blog i mean then you can you can correct their mistakes you can correct their spellings you can correct their and just make sure that this this correction should be open for everyone because it's in online teaching it's difficult to give very personal feedback to everyone so for example if you're correcting a blog then other people are also reading those corrections so they can self correct themselves as well for example a student has wrongly used the verb so when i put in blog as a feedback that okay your verb is wrong so your verb should be placed like this the other can read as well and other can self correct themselves so this is another form of self assessment which is very important in online assessment forms so you can use that one university requirements phone emails uh some people put their 
attach their phone with the emails. Uh, I personally don't do it because then it bang an email every time. So you have to see yourself. Uh, personal versus official phone numbers. Uh, I'm not sure whether you will get two numbers, but in the UK, we get two numbers. One is our office personal number and but one our university gave us. So in online days, if some students want to contact us, we use official numbers only. And that official number is only on for certain time. It's not like for all the time. Uh, Instagram, Facebook Live. So, I mean, uh, uh, one thing you can do is most of our teachers do when they go for a video or something like that, they go for a Facebook Live. The students can follow them from all over the world. So this is this could be an, uh, an, an a good tool. But then it's all up to you and it's all between you and your ad university administration that how you tailor your program. But my suggestion is don't tire yourself. Don't make it hard for you. It's not about the case that you are available for the whole day. That's not possible. Give yourself a time. Give, tell your student that this is a time you can only contact me. After that, probably switch off your official phone. After that, don't even respond to that email. Yes, I know being a student, when I was a student, I used to end up working, turn up the assignment in the last minute. No, but online teaching does not mean flexible teaching, that you are getting flexible, 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 that you're killing yourself. No. Yes, you are sitting at home, you are teaching online, but it does not mean that you are teaching on the on the compromise of your family and friends. Yes, it's the same teaching, but with certain limitations. Okay, now we come to the most important, which is providing quick responses, assessment and feedback to students. What is assessment? In a academic STEM assessment refers to a wide variety of methods or tools that educators use to evaluate, measure, and document the academic readiness, learning process, scale, educational needs of students. Three things, very, very important. Methods, evaluation, and documentation. This is this is a feedback. In online, in online assessment, there is, I mean, people talk about yes, we can give an oral feedback, but there is no oral feedback. If you're telling someone over the phone, oh yeah, I can hear you, your English is very good, it's not a feedback. Because there's no record for that. So documentation of the evaluation is very, very important for two reasons. Number one, it's for the record. And number two, students have to take the grades to show the university and to show the employer that they have passed a certain curriculum, a certain course to go into job market or further education. So evaluation is not on it's it should be documented. That's a very important tool for the for the assessment. Why we do assessments? Because it's a vital. It facilitates student learning and improve instruction also. So evaluation is not only helping students, but it's also helping you to improve your instruction as well. And very important thing is that your evaluation should be based upon the objectives. For example, for example, you are teaching a course of a speaking skills and the, the objective of the course is that by the end of this course, student would be good or would have achieved B1 level in, in speaking. So when you're going to evaluate, you are going to evaluate on the basis of only your objectives. It's not that you are checking their, their grammar as well. You are checking their sentence structure as well. That's very important. This is a biggest mistake which we always do being an English language teacher. Because when we evaluate, we evaluate as a whole. But in online assessment, it's very important that you evaluate based upon the objectives set in your curriculum. So that's very, very important. Uh, and then you need to keep on telling them, the student, that how they can achieve all those grades. Uh, and of course, in online assessment, it's not only it's not only the content which is being evaluated in an online assessment in the objectives, you also set how you're going to operate that technology. For example, you're taking an interview with a student on Zoom. You have only 10 minutes for an interview with a student. In 10 minutes, he doesn't know how to set up a Zoom. It means he has wasted those 10 minutes which was given to him. So it's like a set exam. So it's not only the content you are evaluating, it's 
also the other technological skills you are evaluating at the same time so that that that's very important and then we talk about formative assessment and and summative assessment i'm not going into the detail of those of course formative assessment we all know that it's it's very it's you can you can do it in the class you can do it side by side uh this is all about formative assessment for example submit one or two sentence identify ask them to identify main points uh draw a map or something like that brainstorming so that's all formative assessment and summative assessment when we do it at the end of the course but the question is what kind of assessment should we have in online classes so that's an important question and for that question i put it like this for example in summative there is essay writing portfolio presentation and interview being an being an english language teacher you can do a summative assessment of your student by asking him to essay writing portfolio is a very good tool for assessments is a very good tool for assessment because then it covers all the skills and being an english language teacher if you are working towards overall english language developments of your student this could be a very good tool asking them to make portfolios because then they will be making videos they will be recording audios they will be writing something they will be doing everything and while you are teaching the class you should be keep in mind the formative assessment as well student participation that's very important so being an online teacher where you are doing summative assignment uh, summative assessment at the end it's important you give marks for the student participation presence which is very important for example in the uk it's not allowed for students when they come for an online class that they turn off their videos we have set up we have set a rule about it that whoever will come to the class whether he is in a bed or whether he is on a dining table doesn't matter the camera should be on so that we know he is participating he is engaging so you can set kind these kind of rules with your students small questions this is very important that you are giving small question to all your student whether it's a written in the chat private chat or you are asking through online medium so what you have to do is because it's it's an online teaching and it's a different timing and it's a difficult time you need to go for an formative assessment and a summative Donna. assessment at the same time and you need to develop a rubric for that and rubric should be very clear to the students that okay by the end of this course there would be portfolio or presentation or interview or essay writing but as per rubric i would be monitoring you your student participation as well how much engaged you are and this should be documented so that at the end nobody can say that that oh, well i did not get the rubric so i don't know how you evaluated me so these things should be very clear in your rubric that's how we do it here when students come we give them a very clear rubric explaining them that how you will be assessed at the end so that nobody could challenge that okay look you did not tell me how i will how i will be assessed at the end so being an online teacher you could do both formative assessment and summative assessment as well so here are just just few things like formative assessment you can do surveys you could you do journals you could do blogs you could do wikis discussion boards self and peer assessment and in summative assessment you talk about midterm quizzes final grading final presentations term papers and all those things uh so being a teacher you can you can see what you want to use or do you want to use pick and choose or do you want to use all of them so this is this is your choice at the end depending upon how your students are feeling uh then they would talk about different type of online assessment we talk about based upon usage of internet as i talked about based upon usage of gadgets and based upon pattern followed so when you are doing an online assessment it's not only you are evaluating or you are assessing the content but you are also evaluating that what kind of gadget they are using and how efficient they are they are using that gadget uh what kind of references they are putting for example if you ask someone to put a term paper what kind of a sign references he has put up and all those things so 
this is very important secondary sources primary sources so all these things so this is a different kind of like you do online assessment computer assisted language diagnostic test it and you know and then you have a you have a criteria which is developed by the university which you can use for your classes uh i just want to show you um okay let's 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 forget about it okay objective of of, of online assessment as we talk about it should be very clear that your students should know it very clearly that what kind of assessment you will be doing at the end list down all the assessment tools and softwares and i'm, I'm going to talk about just a minute different tools uh seven principles of effective online assessment this is this is available online as well that your assessment should be learner centered it's not about your, your administration centered or teaching centered it should be learner centered rubric we talk about uh video assessment strategies of online pedagogy multiple choice question you can always give them multiple multiple choice question for example uh if if we're talking about sentence structure you can write a sentence and then give four options at the end to make it correct if you're talking about phonetics phonology phonics you can write a word give four options for the phonics and they have to choose one so you can give multiple questions either or questions what do they think about it short answer in in online assessment we always talk about very very short essay type questions yes if you're turning it a paper at the end yes uh file response questions quiz bowl questions uh very important ordering questions fill in the blanks this is a very important tool assessment tool in 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 online teaching hotspot questions jumble sentences matching drag and draw uh listening comprehension proficiency testing so i mean you all these things you can use being an online teacher uh it depends upon how you want to use it and which kind of strategy with which which you want to use it because there are lots of strategies so i'm not going into the details of these strategies otherwise we will probably spend the whole night talking about all these strategies one by one uh these all these strategies they are available online so you can you can read about these strategies a little bit and just see what kind of strategies do you use personally being a language teacher i use multiple choice questions i use interviews i use short sentences uh yes we need to be very very sure that this is a different time probably teaching is not effective and learning is not as effective as it's in a real time so we have to give a bit of leverage about all that stuff but these are all the techniques strategies which we use for online pedagogy so you can use by yourself thinking about after giving a bit of reading that what kind of strategy you can use for your students and for your academic records online assessment tools google forms very important clickers socrative.com nearpod padlet cisa recap hot potatoes kahoot quizlet and quizalize so these are all the tools which you can use and these are these are all free of cost you don't have to pay anything for any of these tools you can use these tools for teaching and at the end you can use these tool for the class assessment as well so uh someone is coming okay so this is these are the google so you can use any one of them uh but as i said sometimes we are just bit scared of using all these tools just play with these tools they are very easy they are very easy and it's a very fun uh i was i was i was i was not very much familiar with it with the technology so i have been a bit scared of using all these tools but believe me when i started working with google forms when i started working with kahoot with uh with quizlet when we talking about nearpod they were very very easy they were very very easy and at the end they give assessment as well i mean your students sitting at home they can play with their mobile phones plus you are getting a result their results and all those things so these are very very good tools which we can use for online assessment a uh, peer assessment this is this is a sort of a new technique which has been included into the online assessment of uh, online online pedagogy that rely on your on your on the peer 
as they talk about, you send a video or you send an essay. For example, uh, you send a paragraph to your your students for the comprehension. You give them a passage that okay, this is a passage you have to comprehend that passage. In that email, they're all giving their feedbacks. Okay, plus they are not only giving feedbacks; they are trying to make the correct as well. So what you can do is. you can challenge your student by saying that okay look here is a paragraph it's a comprehension and every other student has to write the comprehension but as well as he has to correct the comprehension of the previous student as well and then on the whole you can see the comprehensions so peer assessment is a very important tool in modern online pedagogical skill assessment so you will need to include all these similarly uh it's it's peer teacher uh you can you can nominate you can nominate peer teachers as well in a group of four five students you think your these students are a bit stronger and these are a bit weak for four or five weak student a peer teacher and you can issue a certificate at the end i mean department can issue a certificate at the end that this student has been working as a peer teacher in an online classes so that student can look uh those resources and he could check that that passage whatever you have sent it or whatever work you have sent it and then on the whole you can check that thing so peer assessment you need to include which is a very important tool for this online language learning a uh, rubric very very important i think i'm sure department must have a rubric because every department uh, they have a rubric so you need to develop a rubric if you don't have a rubric i can send it to you my rubric which we developed here in the uk so probably you can use that as as a rubric as well so you need to tweet that rubric a little bit uh because that rubric explains everything to the students and to the teachers that what would be the criteria how students will be assessed what you will be looking for in that in that thing and then you know I mean as we talk about uh even if you have a teacher assistant or a peer teacher if he has a clear rubric he can mark you mark the paper for you as well so every student should be given a very clear rubric which is a general rubric for the whole department so that he should know how you will be assessed in that and then based upon that you can you can you can you can mark easily very important question plagiarism academic integrity uh turnitin is a wonderful tool uh which is again to to some extent it's free uh, because most of the universities buy that tool which is a turnitin tool so we can encourage our students uh to 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 submit their work through turnitin because that ultimately check the check the authenticity uh to some extent there are free plagiarism check tools as well uh but they stop working after one month or two months so you can ask student to submit their work on those tools as well so they can check their work on plagiarized work on that thing as well but please please uh instruct your student right from start that plagiarism is a dishonesty all in all uh if we don't tell them right from start they will keep on doing that so it's better when they come to university start working with them on this academic integrity so we can use these 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 turnitin or uh, other plagiarism software tool for that so so now if you see uh it has become like this the online assessment and teaching is like the its content its pedagogy and its technology uh so this is technology content and knowledge so now three things are important before that in face to face teaching it's two thing which is content and pedagogical skills but when we talk about online teaching now there are three things are important which is technology and right use of technology what kind of technology you are using pedagogy what kind of skills you are using and content which talk about all those and pedagogy also include assessment at the end uh this is just a video i just thought to share it i mean how we how we all teach being a language teacher in face to face i would like to buy a hamburger i would like to buy a hamburger i would like to buy a hamburger I would like to buy a am burger. No, no, no. Let's break it down. I, uh, I, I uh, would, would, 
Would. 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 Like. 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 To. 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 Bye. 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 A. A. Hamburger. 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 Ham. M. B. B. G. G. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. It's not hamburger. Hamburger. I'm not saying hamburger. I said I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy the hamburger. Hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. Maybe we should stop. We don't quit. We do not quit. Again, again. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a burger. I would like to buy a hamburger. 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 The burger. Yeah. So. The idea is not to make our students cry, even if you are using technology or even if you are using face to face. Uh, I think technology softens softens so many emotions in between. If you are a teacher standing in a classroom, you you feel like more dictatorial, but once you are online, uh, you have a bit more softened, you know, mean that kind of skill. Uh, these are some online assessment softwares. Uh, most of them are free again. Uh, which is response.com uh, and then again uh, there is uh, techsmiths so i can i can send you all these links later on so you can use these these softwares as well and most of them uh, they're free uh, basically what happened is most of the companies who make these softwares in this situation of pandemic they have made very so many things free of cost if you are working for a university or if you are a student or your teacher so yeah you can look into these uh, these assessment softwares as well so they are not they are not very expensive uh they have variety of flash cards letter matching crossword puzzles quizzes uh for example i i think this uh, response.com is very good software for this online assessment and it's free as well uh and then there is um adopt captive this is i think this this is paid but yeah um capsism is also again free and then there is a collection of online testing equipment software which is um Uh, assessmentfocus.com it is it is also free and it has lots of quizzes games surveys and reading and all those things so you can use all these softwares uh, for your assessment tools as well and it's all free of cost you don't have to pay anything and their results are very authentic uh, so you don't need to worry about the authenticity of the results as well uh advantages of online assessment it's very interactive uh grading is very easy uh multi, you can you can do multiple assessment online uh learners can take anywhere anytime and they get their results very very quick uh we were talking about the the softwares uh with the softwares the learners can get result within minutes as they finish the paper they get their results immediately so you can use so these softwares are are very very good sort of uh plus in the software you can set up your own paper Uh, you can go and set up paper and you give it to all the students uh, uh yeah and they basically they have a very short time so it's 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 a very there is a very less chance of cheating as well uh so they can do that as well and plus at the end of the uh as the paper finishes they get their results straight away so this is another thing okay. this advantage is yes uh learners should be computer literate learners and teachers both uh there might be some internet problems as well and sometime online assessment softwares are too expensive but as i said because of pandemic lots of organizations they have made it very uh, almost free for all these education organizations so yeah we can we can do that uh with this yeah it's a thank you from me so uh, i would appreciate if you have some questions and probably i would like to answer those questions based on my experience Thank you, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was really good and useful. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Yep, go on. 
and it is about one of the main difficulties teachers have had during the online classes and it is uh, how can I make my students or how can I have my students participate during online classes or synchronous classes because well sometimes they are in classes and it, the teacher asks a question and then all students are in silence so how to deal with that how okay. can we Yes, sure. You know, I mean, uh, when I was doing my slides, I I I, I put lots of tools. Like uh, there was a Kahoot. There was all those things. Okay. Before that, what we used to do is, yeah, these tools are very important because they maintain the student attention. If you are playing a game on Kahoot or if you are teaching a lesson on one of the tools, it's not possible that student is not participating. Okay, number one. So. It's not only about you are speaking, it's only about you are having an external help in terms of some software or some tool which is keeping the student attention. So that's very important. This is what we do here as well. We do understand that online classes can be boring because you are the only one who are teaching. Okay. And plus students, uh, they are not in a group. They are not making noises. They might sleep. They might turn off their cam. They go to, you know, I mean, they go dancing, playing. No. You need to use an external tool, which is kind of a Kahoot or Neobre. I mean, I, I, I mentioned almost 15, 20 tools, which we use as well. So that will keep student engaged because he knows it, that he cannot leave that game because the game is going on. A teaching is going on mm -hmm. because he knows that, okay, after these two minutes, there would be a question and I have to be attentive for that question. For example, in those tools, there is, there is a tool which talks about videos. And videos stop automatically after some 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 time, and then automatically generate questions. So students have to be attentive for those videos; otherwise, they will not answer. And if they will not answer, your rubric should be very clear that okay, look, we will be using different technological tools, and if you do not participate, it would affect your grade system, because as I talk about that. In online assessment, it's not only about language, it's about the, the assessment of technology as well. So you are using an external tool. For example, uh, 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 I give you an example. Uh, the other day I was, I was, because I was teaching a class of refugees. We have lots of refugees. So I lead that program, which we call it community ESOL. Okay. Some people sitting at their home and I was playing a video and that video after some time that video stops automatically. And before I speak, it generates a question on people's screen who are sitting at home. And if they haven't watched that video for teaching objectives, they cannot answer it. So it means if they are not answering me, probably they are not attending it, which is going to affect their grade as well. Okay, but that's later part. For that teaching, they need to be engaged because of that video. They need to see that video. For example, Kahoot. A game is going on. So if someone is not participating, it means either he is not there or he doesn't want to participate, which should affect. It should have a reflection on his grade and on his transcript. That's why a clear rubric is very important because when you give to students that, look, we will be assessing you on the basis of all these things. It's not only about after a month, you turn it to you, you give us a paper and say, well, okay, I have done an assignment. No, it's not only about assignment. Plus, student teachers should have questions. That's very important that during the whole lecture, yes, you're teaching 45 minutes, one hour, make your lesson for 35 minutes, but for 25 minutes, ask questions, ask questions to students again and again, so that they should be attentive, all those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I would like to hear now, teachers, uh, if you have questions or if you have comments to say. I would like to ask you something. Have you ever implemented the SharePoints from Microsoft? Again, sorry? Have you ever implemented the SharePoint from Microsoft? Now we are we are not we are not dealing with Microsoft much actually yeah, but we have other tools which have given to us by the university so which we 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 basically use those tools and plus the tools which I mentioned in that. 
Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to ask you, teacher, because it is happening in here, the thing that happens with students. <laughs> so we no, ask all right, it's all right. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, I don't know. Well, some of the teachers uh, that have asked me or told me about uh, the difficulties in terms of um, assessment, um, I mean, in relation to uh, cheating, because they say, well, how can I evaluate my students and how can I know that they are not cheating? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I give you an example. Okay. What we do here is, is like we do, we sort of do, uh, as they talk about, I mostly use multiple questions, okay? So I make five papers, okay? And I use lots of softwares for making those papers. So my, every paper is not same. Yes, they might have a little bit of similarities, but most of them, they are, they are different. So four, five, six students, they all have different papers. Okay. And I give them a very short time. It's not about they are, they are sitting at home and take a week to submit that paper. So it should be in hours if it's multiple choice questions. Okay. Number two, if you're talking about essays, it about the formation of questions that your question formation should be like this. It's not about like, it's not, it should not like be a, a, a simple question. Okay. You should encourage students to write case studies experiences from their personal life or indirect experiences in writing ex ex experiment so that instead of writing for each other they try to encourage they try to feel writing about about themselves okay so the question formation is very important and plus plus make them writing about case studies everyone are different case studies or a different different paper make five six papers and give those paper to randomly okay I'm sure it will be tough for them to find a person who have the similar kind of paper. I mean, it's, it's, it is time consuming. Okay. So, I mean, yes, at the same time, I also admit we cannot stop teaching full. Uh, we cannot stop ch uh, cheating hundred percent. That's, that's not possible, but keeping in view, it's a different time. Yes. We can minimize it to some extent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Professor Leah. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, well, my question is based on the number of students that you already mentioned because you said that um, because of the pandemic, you or the university reduced the number of students from around 20 to 8, right? Am I yeah, right? Yeah, 24 to 8. That's it. And But in our case, that was not something that was considered. We continue working with the same number of students. And mm -hmm. some cases we have around 25 to 30 students. And this is not something that has been imposed, but it, it's, I think we continue working the same amount of time as we were working in, in the regular classes. I mean, if our classes are four, um, four hours per week, we continue giving those four hours per week in the synchronic meetings. I don't know to what extent it is possible to keep with that, um, with, with those activities in that way because I find it really positive. And I don't know how my partners are working in, but I've been changing some activities and sometimes reducing the time of synchronic meetings because I think it's, it's too much for me, but it, it is also too much for the students. Sometimes they just go class really tired and don't want to talk, and one of the problems of the participation is that they don't want to talk because they're really tired. Sitting more than four hours and then having a break, um, it's exhausting. It's so I don't know what, what was the, the biggest group we have, where you have worked with, in this situation and maybe a couple of advantages for our case. Mm -hmm. 
uh okay uh, liam mean i i do understand your concern and uh, but then mean uh, i'm sorry mean i would not be able to answer because that's between you and your ad university administration mean how they go with that but as i said like in in my university we decided about it that if a, if a, it's a 3 hour face to face teaching we will in online it will be 1 hour okay because you can't you can't sit in a chair or you can't sit in front of a computer for 4 hours or 3 hours something like that uh so i'm um, i'm sorry I mean i i'm not in a position to answer uh, or comment about it because uh i don't know I mean how your university administration take it uh i do understand it i mean we have eight students its reason is because we have lots of international students who did not come this year so we are just dealing with the with the localized or native students only at the moment uh but then i yes i i thoroughly support your argument that teaching 4 hours online is is too much and it's beyond beyond the human capabilities uh not only a teacher but also from a student perspective as well that being a student you can't sit uh four hours or something like that uh and especially uh, the 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 young chaps who are who, who like to who like to jolt down a lot and you know I mean who like to move around a lot uh but then i mean probably yudhi can answer about it or probably you can talk to yudhi later on about it that how how you going to deal with that in your administration yeah that's that's between you and and your university administration how to deal with it uh, but yeah four hours online teaching i i thoroughly agree with you that's 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 bit too much okay teacher um well i understood that you said 24 to 8 students but face to face right yeah we are at the moment eight student face to face yeah but we have but But the, the online, is, yeah. I mean, the 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 group is bigger because of the the other students that are that are at home. Yeah, I mean, they are. I mean, we are still teaching twenty four, but for face to face, we are teaching only eight. Yes, of course, because of the um, pandemic. So the of course uh, the number must be smaller. Well, in relation to the time um, of classes, I mean. It, we we some in a meeting we talked about that and we said that it could be less uh, for example if it if it was four hours then the teacher can uh fix the class for less hours so it it, it is upon um i mean it, it depends on the teacher so how they are going to uh, deal with that, how they're going to manage that so uh well professor christian You you want to talk? Yes, thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, we have Christian gone. I can hear you. Professor, how is your university dealing with frequent connection problems? Because for example, in our case, most of the students live in a rural area, and that's a common problem with synchronous mm -hmm. classes. So, mm -hmm. how is your university dealing with that? Uh Yes Kristen I mean I I I totally understand and I totally uh understand your concern about it. Uh so that's why you know I mean if we go back to our my presentation we talk about synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Uh so for example uh I mean if because at the same time we are recording as well if I'm teaching a class I think I mentioned when I started that when I teach a class of eight students the eight students sitting in a in a classroom but then the next rest 16 students they are in their homes and a camera is monitoring us which call they call three diagonal camera and they are recording as well okay so what we do is that after teaching the class we send that recording to all the students so so whenever they get a chance they can they can they can see that video okay number 1 uh yes number 2 i also understand that living in the uk we don't have much problem with the with the connection but we do have i'm not saying that we don't have we we do have the problem with the connections and all those things and this is a very very genuine genuine concern of all the countries like in my country india and pakistan and sri lanka yes yeah, students don't get a good connection but as i said we need to understand this is a different time and when we say different different has a very big definition it's not normal thing so we should not be expecting that we should be doing everything as equal to normal uh so recording your videos could be a good option and then sending it to them yes give them a bit of time you know i mean it's not about 
a very strict assessment or a strict rules that okay if you don't do it by this time yeah you can't do it no it's okay uh, if someone has some genuine reason someone has some genuine problem yeah you should address that and you should listen to that but keeping in view that the problem and concern should be genuine because otherwise all other non genuine concernees as well they would start taking advantage of it as well so this is again being a teacher up to you how you send the work to them in a email a recorded videos uh recorded things uh and then wait for them to give you feedback keeping in view address the genuine concerns uh yeah thanks a lot professor okay thank you uh professor jisbet are you going to ask something uh, yeah it was kind of a comment regarding to the last news yeah the lockdown that uk had basically are you organizing like full time online classes right now with the lockdown no in we are in the second leg lockdown universities colleges schools they're open as usual mm -hmm. so only the pubs clubs and other non essentials like barbers like hair saloons uh, uh yeah non essential travel uh, they are shut down but university colleges and schools they are open fortunately or unfortunately Okay, thank you. Okay, uh Professor Lee, are you going to ask something else? Okay. Or yeah, one last one last question about this is um regarding the I don't know how to say it, the communication maybe between the university and the professor in the case of Professor Rana. I mean, how was the whole plan of the university uh, to work with um, I don't know to prepare you to some extent to face this new reality that we had to face by force how was that it was um maybe you felt that they were a little bit prepared or it was just experimental and so your situation was uh, experimental as well or how did you do how did you work in, in together okay. with the university no, 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 I, okay lee i mean yeah thank you for this question i think this is this is very important question uh i would say uh we are still in an experimental stage and we are still experimenting so many things so that's why there is no definite thing about anything uh that's why when i started my 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 talk i talk about it's mostly about my experiences i did not use any references because it's an experiment and all the world have different settings and they have a different experimental levels okay that's why i mean in my talk i talked a lot about rubric that that your rubric should be very clear that what kind of teaching you will be doing and how you will be assessing that that teaching that's very important as far as my university my college is concerned uh yes we are we were doing experiments we are still doing experiments and i think we will keep on doing experiments why because technology is very advanced technology is changing every day every day I mean, every two days after two days i i came to know there's a new software we will be working on that pro solution this that and everything yes universities are providing training for that training is mandatory uh, we are quite blessed in that way that our universities invest a lot on in our trainings uh, but then the simple answer to the question is we are ex doing experiments we will be doing experiments yeah god knows until when thank you uh professor jorge are you going to speak Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Professor Rana. Good afternoon. Uh, one of the biggest problems that really we are facing right now when teaching our classes is precisely participation. And as uh, what teacher Judy posed a little earlier, when you ask a question, you realize that many of your students remain silent. Although you can see that some of the questions arrive but on the chat and you were talking that it's quite important to document 
your students' assessment. So my precise question is, it is okay it is okay to use different ways to assess your students, even though when these ways doesn't allow to document the assessment. For example, uh, once w I have finished my class, uh, I have established a video call on WhatsApp with my students, and they all and they feel uh, freer to talk. So I have detected that they are that they are fearful of uh, speaking during the meeting. But in a WhatsApp video call, there is no possible way to assess or to document the, the assessment, uh, just only a screenshot, maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, I mean, uh, Professor Ben, I, I, I do understand your point. Uh, but my, uh, my teaching philosophy is that the best thing we can give to our students is is a confidence okay uh, rest knowledge is just on a word click uh, they can they can click knowledge by themselves there are so many websites there are so many youtube videos they can watch and improve their english language uh, we should be working to work especially for language learning it's more about confidence in that uh, i encourage my students uh, that they should they should talk they should talk in a classroom, whether they are online or not, or, or write. I mean, whatever language skills we are talking about, if we are talking about speaking or writing, they, they should be. Uh, WhatsApp, I mean, I, I, I would, I'm not a very big fan of having a WhatsApp chat with, with students. The reason is because here in the UK, uh, by law, we're not allowed to, to do that with students on WhatsApp and all those things because it takes the issue of so much student integrity and student sensitivity. For example, if you don't have a record for anything, student can blame you for anything. You know what I mean? I mean, this is this is a this is a bit, bit of problem in the UK that we we have to go by uh, very much by the law and by the book. Yeah, this is what we can do. This is what you can do. And uh, uh, you are right. I mean, I I totally agree with you that there are lots of students probably who feel shy when they don't want to talk in 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 the group. But then, I mean, if your of the class is that by the end of this session or by the end of this course, student will achieve B1 level or something or, or any level you talk about, uh, how 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 are you gonna achieve that objective? You know, I mean, probably you would probably the class would be lacking in that objective achievement and all those things. Uh, so I think it's it's better uh, even if you have a chat with them after WhatsApp call, encourage them to speak in the class because uh, plus it will be visible. Their speaking or their their participation would encourage other students as well. And plus, of course, they're gonna good they're gonna get grade for that as well. So you know, I mean, all 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 these things. Uh, but then at the same time, I'm not saying that you should not be doing anything because at least you're doing something which is which is at least you know, I mean, happening something. Uh, but it's better uh, you encourage student to. To come to class participations, I mean, uh, use any tools or give them a grading or something like that. Uh, incentive approach. There is a call. I mean, okay, if you if you do this, there will be this incentive. Uh, yeah. So I mean, my my answer to this is that encourage. For example, I mean, I'm teaching class of refugees these days. Uh, even I teach less, no problem. I I wait, but I want to break that shyness in the classroom. And I want to give that confidence to the student. No, even if okay, we're not talking, we're not speaking, we're not teaching, until unless you speak, you say something, you say something, small words, small words, small words. Yeah. So there are so many activities you can use them, but it's better to encourage them to speak in the classroom. Thank you, teacher. Um, teacher Yusbet, were you going to ask something? Oh, first, I would like to hear Gabriela's comment because Gabriela mentioned that she has a comment. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Gabriela, please. Okay, yes. This is a comment and also a question. Uh, I'm working in a school. I had the same problem when we started this situation. And I could face this problem by asking my, student to, my students to turn on the camera. And also by making questions to specific students. 
but I ask the same to my students in the university that but it is impossible because they don't like to turn on the camera and I don't know if there is a legal framework on that the privacy of the students I don't know about that but that was the the decision that make uh, my classes better the better participation and also a better attendance but uh, in the university the students don't like to turn on the camera and then i ask a specific students and they don't answer some of them are working and i tell them uh, if you are if you were in the on ground classes you should be in the, in the university not working but that is the problem that they don't like to turn on the cameras um yes uh gabriella i mean i i do understand it um uh, yeah, I mean, I think you, you raised a very good point, which is a student privacy might be, he does not have a place uh, where he, he is feeling comfortable to switch on the camera. But if you think if they are participating well without turning off the camera, turning on, then there is no problem. I mean, you, you must have your own rubric or you must have your own assessment tool to assess them. Well, okay, the camera is off, but still they're participating. So uh, it's okay. I mean, it uh, it's, it's as far as, as far as the objectives are met of the course, uh, you ha you have the freedom to do anything in between. But my only concern is that the course objectives should be met. At least in the UK, we focus a lot on that. That okay, you have you set an objective, but then are are these objectives met at the end or not? Uh, so it's very important as well for the department administration to set the objectives which are short, smart, and achievable okay. because goals should be achievable and at the end you should be having you should have a witness or you should have a document with saying look uh, we set these uh, these goals or we set these uh, objectives and at the end our assessment says these objectives have met uh, yeah i mean it's okay the, they want to switch off the camera uh, as i said every every country has its own limitation and delimitations yes sure why not thanks Thank you. Um, now, Professor Gisbet. And my last comment is actually something that was contrary, yes, to Gabriela. It's basically that I have never asked my students to turn on the camera. Uh -huh. Because, um, I mean, I, I actually was really well prepared for this online part. And when you have a, like a lot of cameras in a, only one software, you might end up in that the students will not hear you well. Yes, because a lot of video is consuming more run in the internet. And the second thing is that to keep them, uh, I would say, to catch their attention, yeah, they, I'm basically using two techniques. The first one, the first one is like basically the storytelling. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I start like story over the course or even the class and then like you can ask the students and then they are uh, following that part. Yes, or complimenting or yeah, like the storytelling as a technique, yes, for catching the attention. And the second one is the asking the questions in a positive way. So basically who didn't understood that? No, but I'm using a lot of the raise hand action. Mm -hmm. So who did understood that? Please raise your hand. Yeah. So when I see like there are over because I'm managing sometimes 24 or 22, yeah. So if there are 20, but not two, then I immediately cash in that to students that basically might be that they are not paying attention, yes? Or sometimes, surprisingly, most of the times, they say like, no, we didn't. We didn't understood something. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming back to asking. So that's basically my two techniques. I'm okay. not, yeah, I'm not fan of turning on the camera because the signal always get worse. And especially in our conditions, like exactly. you can imagine we have like, 30 megas per second so it's like basically will not bear these three videos that we have you the you and me at the same time yeah yeah no, that, that, that's true that's true and uh, yeah and, and thank you very much for sharing your experience because that's that's very important uh storytelling experience yeah it, it it's it, it's a good experience of keeping people engaged all the time uh yeah but I, I, as you said i mean uh, i totally agree i mean as i said as when lee asked me about experiment i said yeah we are doing experiments we will be experimenting and all countries in, in the different part of the world they are doing their own experiments 
uh, yeah, and I mean, whatever. I mean, my only concern is, which I always say, we set objectives. At the end of the of the course, objectives should be met. If you think objectives are met, that's fine. That's fine. No problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, well, is there any uh, is there any other teacher who wants to speak? Who wants to say? something to ask a question okay i would like you to um share some of your strategies for uh, keeping your students engaged or for catching students attention um well i think i'm gonna ask uh professor julian could you tell us um or could you talk about some of your strategies? And um, hi, um, I don't know. Well, this semester I'm trying to make a um, gamification strategy. I am around maybe an eighty percent gamified in my classroom, and I have uh, I've been offering XP for everything. And uh, for example, uh, guys, if you keep your camera on, I will give you more XP. So they immediately turn the cameras on. Uh, guys, if you uh, develop this homework, I will give you these points. And something interesting is that they're creating a strategy, a strategy mm -hmm. to earn more points. I mean, it's like they are very motivated to, to read, to write, to talk, and uh, I haven't I haven't done this before, but uh, I'm I'm planning on creating a YouTube channel for sharing this stuff because for me it's really s something new. I have never tried this level of gamification, and um, I I'm trying to make feedback every week. Like I'm I'm making a a, a short evaluation where they make a self uh, assessment and self grade. So at the end of the week, they will have uh, badges, they will have items, they will have points. And for me, it's been like three semesters working on it, but I'm very happy with this strategy. And yeah, sometimes it's more than, guys, please work. They work when we offer them something in, in exchange. And it's not bad because guys need education to be something different than just sitting and shutting their 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 up so it's better if they they see it like um a challenge mm -hmm. if they see education like hey I, I can mix this up i can make this and this uh, other they won't complain but well this semester they have been complaining a lot saying no we have a lot of homework but uh, well life mm -hmm. is hard and they if they want to succeed they will have to make big efforts but gamification for me is a, a nice strategy and that's it uh, how, how many of you will use any free softwares to to assess students or any tool do you use any free software or any free tool to assess students well i i have been trying to do that like automatically but i'm um, like old school it's, uh, i work with google sheets google um, forms yeah. I work with uh, Dropbox. I use OneDrive. I have like five or six different um, websites, and but mostly I arrange them in a Google Form a survey. So mm -hmm. please, yeah. Like, and I have left them, guys. It's you who define your grade, not me. So I'm leaving them, like. Okay the obligation to if you want to have a good grade do your mm. best and, and that's it yeah that <laughs> doesn't mean I, I i i totally agree with you yeah i mean i i totally agree with you yeah i mean it, it, it's good to use this um online tools uh online softwares for all this you know I mean, things and and actually i have seen that they well it doesn't matter they are on on the internet i make them to do things with clay with that's good. That's paper good. like i mean yeah we have to be in front of the computer every day but we still have creativity beyond making a yeah, and plus you can you can engage them in some community 
community exercises as well for for language learning and all those things uh, i i really find it useful that i mean when you give them to work on their personal life experiences like case studies and all those things they they really they really work well because it interests them because of their personality and all instead of asking them to write about something else it's better they write about something about themselves uh, based upon their own life experiences direct or indirect uh, so yeah they they keep quite engaged with that uh, i i will read that down thank you rene thanks teacher um well here we have professor jesbet and we also had professor lia so lia okay please teacher do you have a comment professor lia um yes um one of the outside strategies i'm using to to try to engage students in active participation is to send them uh, a list of people who are expected to participate in class before at least a day before the class mm -hmm. like they know they have to participate and they have time to prepare because sometimes they're really afraid of making mistakes in front of in front of the department and knowing that they are being recorded well i think it's a reason another reason why they don't want to they don't want to talk mm -hmm. so one of the the things i'm doing is this trying to um uh, to motivate them well to participate or to force them <laughs> to some extent by giving them the chance to be prepared and to have the opportunity to get ready to talk mm -hmm. in front of the partner mm -hmm. and i do it as well before the class i read them the whole preparation of the class as the plan for the class and the plan for the week and i tell them that i expect them to participate but if they don't do it i mean if it is too silent i will pick a couple of students to be prepared to participate so i give them around 10 or 15 minutes before they have to talk just to be to try to be ready and for them to make them feel um yeah better in terms of participation <coughs> Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that that's a nice activity, mainly. I mean, I mean, uh, as far as it keeps students engaged, yeah, it, it it is it is very well. It's very well, yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you, teacher. Uh, Professor Jesuit. And so, answering your question about assessment tools, I have used, of course, what you mentioned, Kahoot, but also Quizzy is a really good one. Good, yeah. And yeah, at the university, we have our platform that is Moodle. Yeah, only that is called differently. Moodle is but, well, but yeah, yes. it is good. Yes. Yeah. So, this is the one that I'm using the most for assessment. Yes. Plus, I'm fan, definitely a fan of Microsoft. So, I'm using like all the tools from Microsoft because, uh, I have collaborative work too. Mm -hmm. I'm also integrated. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm integrating like the normal groups for the students so they could work cooperatively and also in an environment that is an online teaching. Yes. So I have this collaborative group based on the slides, like uh, Microsoft slides. Yeah. So they are basically having each slide, like one of them, and they are completing any task. And at the end, like a whole document made for the whole group. So that's also another type of assessment. Plus, um, we are using Microsoft uh, Teams, yeah? And that allows me, it's like, if I'm in a class, so that allows me to create like groups from three or two students or four at the same time, and even in in microsoft teams i could be in four different calls at the same time yeah mm -hmm. so yeah. i'm using that to create to put like four uh mini groups yeah within the class so from five students and they are also working and interacting uh, within groups and that's also another type of assessment because i ask them to record themselves so mm -hmm. even i can I, I i also can go like for every group and stay with them and so on but also they could record themselves to see that like in the future yes to watch so mm -hmm. basically mostly that are the assessment tools that some of the times i'm implemented yeah. 
Okay, yeah, but uh, that's great. That, that's a nice activity, yeah. Thank you for sharing this a little bit with us, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'm gonna ask uh, Professor, okay, Professor Carmen Sam, uh, what strategies have you used or do you use to um, to catch your students' attention? Uh, what of those strategies have been really meaningful in your classes? Okay, not there. Okay. Um, okay, Professor Graciela, could you please share with us some of the strategies you use to catch your students' attention? Okay. Um, okay, so I know that time in England is different from here, so it's yeah. really late there. So I really want to thank you, Professor Rainer, for sharing with us. Um, I would like to share something. Um, you were talking about uh, portfolios at the beginning. Rana said that one one thing to to help us to assess our students, uh, it was using portfolios. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly using portfolios, but every single class I, I develop with my students, I ask them to make uh, short activities, and, I, and they have to upload it to, to the drive. I have a file in Drive, and for every single class, I ask them to upload the activity they develop in the class. So I'm mm -hmm. not like giving grace to every single activity, but I take it like um, class participation, yes? Mm -hmm. That is like a strategy I have in order to make my students work in the class, pay attention to the class, and also to have a record of the students that really work in class. That's very good, that's very good, that's very good. Yes. That, yeah. that was all. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, if uh, people are, I mean, you know, people are working hard, and that that's that's very good. That's very important. That uh, we're all working hard in this pandemic. So I hope yeah, I mean, it finishes soon and we go back to normal life. God knows when, but we should. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, thank you very much to all thank of you. you. Thank you very thank much, you. teacher Rana, and thank you very much, uh, teacher. Um, Thanks a lot. I hope uh, we can continue having this a uh, kind of meetings to share um, the different strategies we can use to, to enrich our knowledge in that. So, um, well, I don't have more comments. Just want okay. to say yeah. again. thank you very um, much. It was, yeah, it was lovely talking to you all, and it was lovely meeting some old faces as well. So it's good. Okay. Yeah. Well, take care, everyone. Uh, and enjoy Thanks your day. Thank you, Rana. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Do we, do we have his contact, like email contact? I'm sorry? Do we have his contact? His well, email? Yes. Uh, could you share with us your email, Professor Rana? Well, that would be great, yes, in order to... Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think he shared it just... <coughs> Okay, so it is there in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>